All right, I'll do my housekeeping. Here are my three note cards. And here are my adults present. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Bees pollinate nearly 30% of the world's crops, but they are dying at an unprecedented rate. Without bees, we would have no fruits, no vegetables, nuts, and most importantly, coffee. Today, I want to talk to you a little bit about the problems that bees are facing, the impact that you can have on solving that problem. I also want to talk to you a little bit about the super organized social structure of the honeybee, and then some steps that you can take if you'd like to become a backyard beekeeper. So what about that cup of coffee? Would you be willing to pay for it if it was three times the current cost? That is exactly what we're facing if the honeybee dies. It's called colony collapse disorder, and scientists don't know exactly what's causing it. What they do know for sure is that the honeybee is conceivably the most important pollinator in the world. They are responsible for the pollination activity to supply one quarter to one third of the world's food supply. Now, some possible causes of colony collapse disorder, or CCD, pesticides. Commercial pesticides are highly regu regulated, but those that are used by the typical American homeowner are not. Now, these pesticides are also um, sold at your local um, Home Depot or Lowe's. I have some handouts for you if you want to hand those out to the crowd. Um, they are also sprayed onto the plants before you even bring them home. The bees will land on those plants. They'll take them back to the hive and then that will kill the entire hive. Um, they are central nervous system attacker, and they cause paralysis and death. So what can you do instead? We can use things like biopesticides. They're a little safer. Um, they're made from things like fungus and plants. And another thing that you can do with these biopesticides is you can spray them at night with a low-pressure sprayer. Bees go to sleep at night just like you and I do. Um, so this is a, a, a better alternative and a safer alternative to those neonicotinoid pesticides. Um, also, you could plant a garden. So things in Florida that bees like are citrus and clover, um, sunflowers, wildflowers, and a vegetable garden. Um, squash is only uh, is a unisexual vegetable. That means it requires cross-pollination from the male to the female flower. And bees are responsible for doing that. You can't have your pumpkin spice latte or your juicy summer watermelon without the bee. So now who's doing all that hard pollinating work? Well, that would be the ladies. The ladies of the hive, that is. Um, the female bees are the worker bees. And they hold many jobs in the hive. Um, they do things like hive cleaners, nurse bees, wax builders. They also um, are guard bees, so those are the ones that sting you when you mess with their hive. Um, and then the last job that they have is foragers for pollen and nectar. Bees only live 45 days, so that is the complete life cycle of the bee. Now, the hive has only one queen, and she has a very, very strong pheromone that they can smell. That's their motivator. They smell that, that pheromone, and it causes them to work. When the queen dies, they also smell that as well and they can begin making a new queen from the eggs that she has laid as long as that egg is under three days of age. They take the larva and they fill the cup full of royal jelly which helps create the queen. And they cap it at a very high rate so that the long abdomen of the queen is formed. Now the drones, those are the male bees of the hive and they have only one job and that is to pollinate, I'm sorry, that is to fertilize the queen. They do nothing else, they have no stingers, and when fall resources begin to wane, those drone bees actually are kicked out of the hive by all the female worker bees or killed. Now, to some of you, this sounds interesting enough that you might want to become a backyard beekeeper. Beekeeping requires knowledge and work, but the rewards are great. Um, all you need are the proper reference materials and um, the equipment to do the job properly. I began by reading books and watching videos. YouTube is a great resource. The Fat Bee Man is one of those YouTube um, videos that I watched quite frequently. 
And um, you also need to uh, join your local club. That's a great place to hear from other beekeepers. Um, you can also ask questions and learn from everybody who is either new or seasoned beekeepers. Also, purchase some basic protective gear. Um, you definitely want to ask uh, in your club what works. I purchased a jacket before I knew that they made vented jackets, and here in Florida that's a really uh, nice thing to have. Um, and then find a mentor who will let you watch and um, work and ask questions. And um, just get in touch with other people who are interested in bees. So I've given you lots of information to consider on the really interesting honeybee. They are disappearing at an alarming rate, but you hold the key to helping solve this problem. They have a super organized social structure, very interesting. And with a little bit of knowledge and um, the right gear, the backyard beekeeper could be a very rewarding and interesting hobby. And that is an idea that is as sweet as honey. What questions do you have? Brayden. I know you said commercial um, got, um, pesticides. pesticides are highly regulated, but what, what kind of documentation is with that? I mean, big agriculture is just so massive that one would think it would have a huge impact on, on possibly the bee pollination. Well, they are regulated by the, uh, the USDA and the Environmental Protection Agency. And I don't have exact figures on that, although I do know that the biggest impact is the homeowner. It is the, um, the person who's planting plants in their garden, the person who's using Roundup and um, neonic pesticides. So it's just you've got to start where you're at and do what you can, and that would definitely be. Where, where can you purchase um, commercial products? So you're talking about residential? For residential. Both of the um, pieces of, um, or the two products that I showed are available at Lowe's, Home Depot, Walmart. Okay. And they're becoming more popular. They're not quite as popular as I wish they were. But with knowledge, they'll make those um, better sellers. So once you know better, you do better. Any other questions? Jamie. Does the queen bee have the same lifespan as the rest of the bees? No, that's a very good question. The queen bee can live up to nine years. Wow. Yep. Wow. <laughs> but she can also be replaced. So the hive can <laughs> replace her. They can reject a queen. They can kill a queen. They can make a new queen who will actually, as soon as she hatch, hatches, will go kill the existing queen. Really? Yes. Huh. Yes, and you can also replace your queen if you would like to um, make your bees more gentle. So a lot of people are buying um, a more gentle breed of um, the Apis mellifera, which is the honeybee, mm -hmm. and they're replacing their queen. And actually, it's a good idea to do so for the commercial and backyard beekeeper. It's good to do so every two years just to keep your um, your stock um, healthier. Hmm. Aren't there other bees that attack bees? Like um, yellow jackets are a big attacker of honeybees. So it's kind of funny when I work my hives, um, some days I'll go out there and I'll see them having a um, little war with the yellow jackets. And they fight to the death. Wow. wow. Alan. What is the impact of the residential um, hobbyist with bees versus the commercial? Actually, backyard beekeepers outnumber commercial beekeepers four to one right now. Wow. So the backyard beekeeper is making a huge impact on the honeybee population. Any other questions? Did you have one, Betty? All right, well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.